Join us. Support us. Join us. Support us. Just because the media is masses we have draconian law, we have brutal police action, and we have uh, the judicial uh, working at the behest of the political leaders. Join us. Touching the camera, and literally, it just started recording us. We're sitting here talking about what we should talk about. Like, I'm a total skeptic. She's the spooky believer. <laughs> I'm, I'm freaking not. out right now. But that's fucking crazy. You there can't even don't. explain that though. All right, there's so no debunking or anything. I keep saying we want this to be natural, so I don't let it be natural. I don't know how the fuck that just happened though. Yeah, Honest it totally to just God. turned on by itself, and we have no idea how. So, I want to go ahead and give you just a little bit of information about Long Corona and how Silver Dollar Saloon actually ties in to where we're at. So basically, Long Corona, as many of you know, is not only just a California serial killer, like Notorious, across the United States, he's one of the most notorious killers. And it all happened right here, right where we're all at. This bar used to be owned by Juan Corona's brother, and at that time it was known as the Guadalajara Cafe. The week, or I won't say that, I don't know, because I, I don't want to I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. Shortly before he was actually arrested for the murders, there was an attack inside this bar. And they suspected that Juan's brother was responsible or Juan himself. Um, when they went in to go arrest Juan, they found a ledger with 34 different names and all the victims that they found, they found 25 bodies in total. 25 of those were on the list of 34. One of the names was a gentleman that was actually attacked inside this bar. When, after the man was attacked, he sued Juan's brother. Juan's brother fl fled back to Mexico and basically it started an investigation and from what I understand, we'll, we'll, we'll get some people on to talk about it, but the floorboards of this bar were ripped up looking for bodies from Juan Corona's victims. That's crazy. And also, it was said that um, in the trial, in the defense, the defense was actually saying that it could have been Juan's brother also. And that's another point that I wanted to bring up. There's a lot of like speculation back and forth on whether or not Juan was actually guilty. Um, and no one really knew. So, I mean, people say that there could have been other people involved, that it could have been this person or that person. So basically, we just want to like delve into all information and try to get as many people to come forward and talk to us about it. It's really interesting, I think. Yeah, and I think it's really important for us both to keep an open mind me and Amber, one of the things that brought us together is the fact that we're super fascinated with serial killers <laughs> and horror and all that kind of stuff in general. Yeah. And you'll see, like, over time, our little page is going to kind of wander off in all kinds of directions. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just kind of strange that recently her and I had a talk about serial killers, and she does have a tendency to lean more towards a little bit of sympathy. I won't say she goes full bore, because she has sympathy for the victims, obviously. Right. But she really wants to know what is it that makes these people do crazy things so i think what it is too is i don't really believe that like people are born evil mm -hmm. i kind of like have a heart for them because i feel like 
you know, what happened in this person's life that made them the way that they were. That's right. just my outlook on it. So, and I always want to, I'm that kind of person that wants to figure out why someone does what they do. And that's just where my mind is at on it, so. Well, one of us here has, <laughs> I won't say, well, I don't know, is it fair to call you a fan of Eileen? Yes. So, I'm obsessed with Eileen. <laughs> Eileen Wuornos, okay, she's a really well-known serial killer, female serial killer, and I don't know, even though we want to stay with, like, Yuba Sutter, I think it's only fair, since I picked one, to give her a little bit of time, maybe we should get into that, but if you guys know Eileen's story, you'll know that she was really somebody that was not dealt a fair hand, and you can't help feeling bad for it. Yes, she killed multiple people, but it really got her and I talking on a subject that many people don't think about. Right. What makes these people kill? Right. And I could honestly understand, to a point, why she did what she did. And that's where the struggle comes in, back and forth, in your heart. It's like, you know, how do you really condemn people like that yeah. for doing those things? Well, it's kind of like a strange thing, too, with this uh, article about Juan uh, coming out. There's been a lot of talk on Facebook about it, and we actually ran into somebody who knew him, was a friend of his daughter's, and she says that this was a setup. So I'm gonna try to keep an open mind up until, like right at this moment, I've been 100% it was all one, not the theory that Amber shares that's uh, possibly his brother, which a lot of people feel that way. But supposedly in the Hispanic community, there's a real strong suggestion that he was set up um, and I don't that know. makes the most sense to me, to be honest. It really yes. does. Yeah, we're fine. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so that's something we're going to go into, and I think we both agree that we're going to keep an open mind and just kind of see where this thing goes. And not only that, but just to let everybody know, um, there's different stories, and people think that this happened and that he's innocent and that he's guilty. We're really going into it open-mindedly, so I don't want anybody out there who's watching to think that we are one way or the other. We are completely neutral in the whole situation, going based on um, information that we find um, in, during research. So that's basically what this whole thing is. Absolutely. Okay. So we're pretty excited. Um, I think I'm just going to give you guys a quick little look around here in a minute and show you kind of the bar. Maybe we'll run outside yes. real quick while there's still a little bit of light. It's getting pretty dark outside. And just kind of like let you guys get a feel for the Silver Dollar, once known as the Guadalajara Cafe. Okay, so here we are at the Silver Dollar Saloon and trying to get a video of it all in. This is where Juan Corona's brother's restaurant was. 